Um, I would like you to tell me a bit about what you would like to know and um, what kind of image editing software you have and use or are most familiar with. So I can take that into consideration. That's all right. I don't think we will take much longer to um, explain the basics. Okay. Okay. Um, well, first of all, um, you will have to run GIMP or Photoshop uh, on the side. And um, I would like you to, to direct you to um, the skins we will be using. They are made or have been made by Elo Elliot. Her blog, she's got a blog that's at eloelliot.blogspot.com. Um, I'm copying the address in local chat. But um, her skins are on a Google source page. Let me find the link. Um, here. Elo made um, skins in Second Life for quite a while. And she's got several different bases that you can use. Um, the latest one is the Starlight, which you can see in the bottom, on the top left. Below that is Pleiades, which was the one before that. And on the right side, she had the original skins um, from 2008, uh, which you can use too. Any of these uh, she released in, under an open license. The older ones under the BSD license, the newer ones are under the MIT license. That means you can use these skins and modify them and do basically whatever you want with them. You can resell them, give them away, share them, upload them, use them for anything you like. So. All of these downloads come as a Photoshop file. Photoshop files can be opened in Photoshop, of course, but also in GIMP, and they are layered. If you just pick one of them, let's use the um, let's use the Pleiades face file, which is the bottom one. It's got, it's a rather, l no, let's not, let's not use that. Let's use one that is a little bit a smaller download. Let's use the pink PSD file, which is on the right side, the first link. It's called pink C PSDs. Um, it comes as a zip, which you have to download and open. And 
In the zip file, there are three PSD files, one for the face, one for the lower part, and one for the upper part of the, of the avatar. The avatar skin consists of three different textures, um, one for the face, one for the upper body, and one for the lower body. Um, all of these have to be edited individually. If you open one of these files, either in Photoshop or in GIMP, um, Do you have, do you all have one downloaded? Okay. Okay. Starlight works too. You will see that ELO makes use of a lot of different layers. Each layer is described with what exactly it displays and can be edited individually. That's, that means you can um, turn them on and off. Um, in Photoshop, you just click the, um, the eye uh, icon next to the layer in GIMP it um, is I'm not too familiar with GIMP because I don't use it too much No, no, it's fine. I can run both side by side and um, make two explanations. That is probably also the most useful way. Um. Just takes a moment to start it. There we are. In GIMP, you need you have a, a an and uh, a layer window open to where you can see all the layers. <laughs> yes, um, the the avatar, uh, the the skin files, they need to be wrapped around the avatar. So every section of this file. Um, is um is wrapped around a different part of the avatar. The upper section is um the front of the face, then the lower right and left corners are the sides of the face, including the ears. The center is the mouth, and the upper right and left corners are where the eyebrows are at. Uh the eyelashes, sorry. If you do not like any option, if, for example, if you do not like the freckles, um, <laughs> if you do not like the freckles, you can just turn them off. If you go to the freckle um, layer, which is um, Well, the one that I have is has a has a, a folder for the freckles, um, where you have two different freckles, and then you can turn them off. And um, she's already made some kind of makeup for 
the, the face which you can either edit by painting directly onto an, a new layer or on the existing layer or you can take an, an uh, makeup layer and, cha and colorize it for example to make it a different color or to make it to change the, the saturation and the hue um, remember that when you start editing a skin that there are several different um, options the color will be applied to the below layers by default you will just paint onto it and that will blend out everything that's below it you can change that by um, clicking on um, In Photoshop, uh, in the layer window, there is uh, a drop-down menu right at the top um, where you can choose different kinds of ways for the uh, colors to blend into the below layers. Um, what works very good is multiply. That is, um, you paint onto something and it will be merged with the colors that are below it. The others may or may not work depending on what you want to do you will need to try them to see what they do really but playing with that can give you great results um, also you can um, depending on what kind of um, file you use there are different ways to change the skin color. If you use the older files, um, the ones from 2008 from the download page, they come with predefined uh, skin tones from pink, pale, fair, tan to dark. Um, all of these are at the bottom, th uh, are basically the bottom layer of um, the PSD you, you downloaded and you can change that to a different color if you want to as well and um, with the Playad, I think it was the Playadis skin you could um, she had all the skin tones in the same PSD file where you can just check the ones you want and um, not use the other ones and the starlight skin uses um, where is it uses a a layer um, option skins below starlight that probably will only work in Photoshop and not in GIMP where you have to um, click on window and um, lay and check layer comps and then there are several presets you can choose from that will automatically adjust the skin tone I'm assuming Kayako needed to go. So, yeah, so she said. Um, basically, that's the way you, um, edit the file in GIMP you if you if you want to do something additionally to the makeup or anything you need a, a little bit of, of artistic skill not very much but some and oh I just found a GIMP layer window there it is um, The nice thing is you can, I mean, if you if you edit it on the um, PSD file, 
uh, it's kind of hard to see how it will look on your avatar in world. So um, what you could do is to upload, I mean to save it, to save the, the um, texture file and upload it into uh, your OpenSim installation and um, then apply it to your avatar which is kind of a tedious process because you need to upload every single uh, change you make. A much nicer way to do it is to use... Uh, I'm usually saving these files as a PNG because they include transparency if, if only for the um, the, eyebra the, uh, the, the eyelash uh, corners. So PNG usually works the best for me. Um, the, an, a better way to do it is to... I mean, in Imprudence, you can uh, access files from your local computer and put them on your avatar. This is just for preview um, purposes, so others will not see that. But it works great if you are working on, on a skin and want to see how it l will look in world. If you right-click on your avatar and choose Appearance, um, I mean, to create a skin, you ne first need to create it in your uh, inventory. You need to right-click on a on a folder. I'm using the Body Parts folder. Click on New Body Parts, New Skin, and then you need to well give it a name and wear it, and you will start looking quite ugly with the Linden default skin. But if you then edit your appearance and click on the skin tab, you will see there are um, three uh, fields. One is called head tattoo, the other upper tattoo, and the, the, the third one is the lower tattoo. This is where the uh, individual um, textures from the skin files need to go. And if you click on any of these, it'll open uh, and a separate window called pick, for example, hat tattoos. And there are two tabs. One is called inventory, the other one is called computer. Inventory shows you the textures in your inventory. And the computer tab, if you click on it, allows you to add files from your computer to um, a, s uh, a temporary inventory and to see them directly on your avatar. And um, what is really nice about this is b if you make, uh, if you choose a file from your computer, uh, and you decide you don't like it the way it is, and you go back to GIMP and edit it again, and save it at, as the same file name, then it will automatically update the appearance on your avatar if you have checked that. So you will s you will see in real time how the changes will look. What you also can do is to combine elements of different um, templates of ELOs. For example, if you like the eyebrows from the starlight face and you like the base of Pleiades better, you can just uh, drag or copy and paste a layer from one file to another and replace it and you probably need to position it um, correctly too. But um, that way you can create your own custom skin. And um, for educational purposes, if people need a PG-rated skin, which does not show any naughty bits, then you can also copy um, some kind of underwear onto them or paint it onto them so that people wearing them will always appear clothed.
Any questions? Nice. If you use um, a different um, template, if you use the starlight, she made a, a different kind of teeth for that that look a little bit more clean. So I would let I would take a look at all of the bases and pick which you think is best for you. I'm glad it does. It's really not hard. Um, you can also look at... Um, there are nice resources on the web for uh, brushes for GIMP and Photoshop. One of the best ones I know is deviantart.com where you can um, download brushes um, to add some details, I don't know, for, for the face. They have makeup brushes and uh, eyelash brushes and stuff like that. Um, I found a lot of, of, of nice things there. Let me paste that in chat too. Um, they have a, a subsection um, called... Um, need to load it. It's not loading fast enough for me. They have a subsection that's called something like um, digital resources where you can download brushes for GIMP or Photoshop and load them in GIMP or Photoshop and um, play with them as well. Doesn't load for me. It seems their servers are down. Yeah, I don't I think they are too busy at the moment. Well, that was the introduction I wanted to give. Yeah, I get that too. You're most welcome. Thank you for coming. If there's any questions or anything, you can contact me on the blog or in any other meeting. <laughs>